Although mimics are not often used for the realisation of millimetre wave filters, uh, there are some instances where you may want some filtering on a multifunction tube, for example, and that's the example we're going to be talking about today. Um, we have a design for an E band mixer um, which now requires the introduction of an LO buffer amplifier. Now, the LO is uh, half the frequency because it's a subarmonically pumped mixer. So, uh, the filter we're considering here is required because we need to uh, take out the second harmonic. Um, any effects from the second harmonic of the amplifier, which would introduce more spurious signals. So, the e band frequency range of the mixer is 71 to 86 gigahertz. So, the LO input at half the mixer frequency, uh, allowing for IFs up to 11 gigahertz, needs to cover uh, 30 to 43 gigahertz. But of course, we need to reject the second harmonic of that frequency. So. The easiest way to implement this filter is uh, as a low pass filter with the shunt C, the series L and shunt C. Now we've gone straight into using uh, foundry PDK elements uh, from a gas foundry. Shunt C's being metal insulator metal capacitors and the uh, series inductor being a uh, microstrip line. So what happens when we simulate this? What we find is uh, we have great in-band performance. We have uh, very low loss of 43 gigs and better than 20 dB match. But the area between Mox 2 and 3 that we need to reject, we've only got um, just over a dB of rejection at the low end of our rejection band. Now, because this is a, a simple filter, the most rejection we're going to get is 6 dB per octave uh, roll-off uh, for each order of the filter. So third order means a maximum of 18 dB per octave. Because the difference between these frequencies, 43 to 60 gigs, uh, means that the actual max we'll get is 12.5 dB. Uh, but as you can see, we're getting nowhere near that. So, we need to come up with um, the next idea. What we're going to introduce now is a series L in series with each of the shunt capacitors um, to give us uh, some notches in the rejection band. So at the moment I'm just putting ideal uh, inductors in and optimised values come out to be order of, the order of sub 0.1 nanometer, that sort of thing. And let's just see what that does. I'll put the history on, do a sweep, and what we see is immediately got the same sort of in-band performance, still got our 20 dB match, but we've now got history of a good deal of reflection, uh, rejection, almost 20 dBs across the whole band. So the next stage is to implement the transmission lines, the inductors rather, as transmission lines again, so we've got some thin transmission lines here. We include the uh, through gas fire model, you can see it's a, it's a foundry model for the through gas wire with the uh, bond pad parasitics included. You may not have noticed, but the values of the shunt capacitor will come out very small, possibly too small for a practical implementation, so we're going to replace the shunt capacitors with two series pairs to allow us to use slightly bigger values. And we're going to simulate this one, and again, we get the desired performance we need, greater than 20 dB match, very low loss, and almost 20 dB rejection across the uh, 60 to 86 gigahertz band. So, we're now going to lay out this design. Here's our layout. So here's the extra lengths of line and the two series cluster pairs. I've taken the opportunity to uh, meander the series line slightly to make the design a little bit more compact. So I'm not going to do a live EM simulation because obviously that takes quite a bit of time. What I'm going to do is show you a data set that we saved earlier. Put the history on. What you now see is that immediately uh, the parasitics, etc., have messed up the uh, return loss in band. It's almost 15 dB, but nowhere near as good as it was. Uh, and although rejection is fine at the top end of the band, the rejection at the low end of the band, take the history off, has deteriorated to 15 dB, and we're on a losing slope there. So what can we do about this? 
what we do is compare our scratching simulation against the M. So if we do this, what we see is it's not bad, but it's not perfect. What we can do is optimize the schematic such that we exactly model the yeah, performance. So again, if I switch the history on, do a sweep, history off. What you see is now we now have a very good fit, almost perfect on ST1, but certainly perfect on the two fashion coefficients. Uh, what the optimizer has done is basically reduce all the lengths slightly. Now, because we're uh, essentially reverse engineering a poor EM simulation, whatever happens here, i.e., the lengths reduce. In practice, we need to uh, do the opposite, i.e., increase the lengths, etc., uh, to bring our performance into the original desired performance. So, again, let's relay out the new values. So, if you remember, for example, length one reduced quite dramatically in the uh, reverse engineering, so this time we uh, do the opposite, we increase it. Likewise, these two lengths have increased very slightly. Um, I've taken the opportunity to add the increase in this length in terms of a, a bend to keep it away from some more components that will be over here in the multifunction going design. So if we go back to our simulation bench. History on and do our new EM simulation data set. What we find is immediately we get back to our 18, 19, 20 dB uh, return loss in band and to the history of our rejection is back to 19 dB across the whole band. So, in summary, that's our, our design. Uh, finished and laid out, uh, incorporated into our E-band mixer design. So here's the uh, LO input to our mixer, here's our half frequency LO buffer. We're going to do another EM simulation later to include the 50 ohm lines, but they shouldn't have much of an effect. So that concludes the design of our uh, filter for use in the uh, E-band mixer. Uh, if you want any more further information on silicon or gallium or GAN mimic design, Please visit our website www.plextechrfi.com.